Hello, and welcome to this fireside chat. Today, we will be discussing API infrastructure. We will take a deeper look at how two industry leaders are building their API architectures to deliver reliable, high-performance APIs at scale. I'm Kevin Jones, Senior Product Manager at Nginx, and today I'm joined by Vikash Tiwari, a Director and Distinguished Engineer, and Rohit Joshi, VP of Software Engineering at Capital One. Vikash and Rohit, thank you so much for joining us today. It would be great if we can get an introduction from each of you, just to give a recap of your background and experience in the industry. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Rohit Joshi, uh, VP of Software Engineering. I joined Capital One around nine years ago. Overall, I have 20 plus years of experience in telecom, uh, fintech, and security domain. That's great. Thank you. How about you, Vikash? Hey, thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me here. So my name is Vikas Tiwari. Uh, I'm a distinguished engineer in API Gateway team at Capital One. Uh, for most of my career, I've been building enterprise applications using Java, JavaScript as full stack developer. And then I joined Capital One five years ago. And I came to know about Nginx, OpenResty, and this whole ecosystem of uh, uh, frameworks and, and libraries with a big emphasis on uh, performance and resilience, uh, which I found very interesting. So I've been part of API Gateway team since then. That's great. Yeah, Vikash, Rohit, thank you again for joining us today in this fireside chat. And thank you for those introductions. Uh, I personally am really excited for this conversation and I'm sure that our viewers today are as well. So uh, with that, that being said, let's get started. Um, I, I, I kind of curious, you know, um, with giving my experience as an SRE, I know that over the years, APIs have kind of evolved and become very important uh, in companies' kind of strategy. Um, I'm curious, like, what role do APIs play in Capital One's strategy? And really, what are you guys using APIs to do? Uh, sure. Uh, so, uh, in, in 2014, our CEO, Rich Fairbank, announced the API for strategy which was the key enabler for digital transformation and Capital One becoming a tech company. And as part of the APFR strategy, we built large number of ecosystem, give you example, uh, which allows us to publish, find, manage, and register our APIs through our portal, as well as we built the API gateway to ensure these APIs are secure and authenticated and authorized and proper controls are applied. Today, APIs are used almost in all our product, whether it's the payment processing, credit card transactions, machine learning and analytics, our virtual card and data protection where we use the tokenization APIs. We also have a three environments for our internal um, inter-API communication, communication with our external partners, where our external partners uh, consume our APIs. And the third one is we go out and consume uh, our partner's API and all three environments are enabled through the APIs. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's, it's amazing how API to API is just enabling businesses to really uh, collaborate and grow their infrastructure and their business. So that's that's great. Uh, Vikash, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, Kevin, uh, like Rohit mentioned, we have different flavors of API communication. And by opening up information access via API, we also allow our third-party partners uh, to tailor experience uh, the way they want, right? Uh, uh, applications like Mint are a good example where we can share customer information with their consent and they can build application and services for the consumers. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I'm kind of wondering too, like if, if we were to, if you were to go into a time machine and go back and, and kind of start over from scratch, is there anything that you guys would do differently? Like how would you guys design your infrastructure differently from the start? Uh, would there be any kind of like actions you would take to kind of like start from start from scratch and, and build the API infrastructure? Um, so, with... <clears throat> yeah, so Kevin, one thing which is very important for having a successful API infrastructure is, is building a registration and discovery portal. You, you need to build a system for your developers where they can go build API specification, you should be able to 
enforce standard standardization, uh, enforce good naming practices, they should be able to find other APIs. Uh, so you know you are not creating duplicate applications. And also it's very important to have a well-defined process in place to give access uh, for, for these APIs, which is very important from security perspective. Uh, also, it's, it's very critical that you have a, an API gateway, right? You don't want every application to implement uh, cross-cutting concerns such as authentication, authorization, rate limiting uh, in, in every single backend. So APIs can focus on the business logic, uh, solve that, and offload all these cross-cutting concerns to API Gateway. Yeah, so I wonder, you know, when you guys did first get started, was uh, authorization and authentication um, difficult to do? And kind of what, what kind of technologies, I guess, did you use to kind of deliver your APIs at this scale and this requirement that you had uh, for the infrastructure? Particularly for authentication and authorization, um, we use Nginx uh, and build our own authentication and authorization mechanism on top of Nginx using Lua and C, C++ modules uh, with our own OAuth server and uh, with the OIDC compliance. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's that's really good. And um, I'm wondering, you know, you mentioned Nginx and Lua, and I'm, I'm hearing lots of cool technologies that you're using that are based on a, an open source strategy. Um, how does open source play in Capital One strategy for software engineering? Uh, so uh, Kevin, I mean, it, it's all about engineering economics, right? We use open source throughout our tech stack. Uh, it lets us build very high quality, secure software, which is also then supported by big community of developers. So, so if I take an example, we are using Spring Boot, which is a very popular Java project. To, to build our internal internal framework, which developers then use to deliver API experience. Uh, other languages, right, such as Golang, JavaScript, Python, they are widely adopted and used by, by developers in, in the company. Um, if we talk about infrastructure, we are using uh, ECS, AWS ECS, and, and serverless technologies to, to deliver the APIs. Well, that's great, yeah. Um, how, how do you guys, discover open source tools? Is there something that um, you guys look for in a product that kind of helps solve certain problems or follows certain kind of uh, uh, product uh, decisions? So Capital One uh, founded its open source office in 2015. Uh, and, and based on the use case, right, we, we look like what's out there, what kind of license it supports, and after like carefully, you know, reviewing all that information, we decide whether we can adopt a product or not. Also an open source product has to have a good support, right? Given, given the cloud environment we are living in now, and uh, we, we do need to monitor like what kind of vulnerabilities are out there for every application. So it's important that we track that. And after reviewing all this, we, we decide whether, you know, we want to adopt a, an open source yeah. project or not. Yeah, that makes sense. And I would imagine having a, an open source tool that has a really good community backing also probably helps a lot too. Yeah. Great. Um, so, you know, I guess I, I want to dig in a little bit more to Nginx. You know, everyone here is probably an Nginx user that might be watching this or interested to learn about Nginx. And I, I'm curious, like, why and how did you use Nginx to kind of build these high performance platforms at Capital One to really enable API data and payment security in your, in your guys' systems? So Kevin, let me tell you an interesting story. When I joined Capital One, um, we had our, most of our APIs were built with the SOAP and they were authenticated and authorized by a vendor product, which was a service bus. My background was in telecom. And when I looked at the, the infrastructure we use to support a couple of thousand requests per second, I jokingly say to my boss saying that I could run all of these on Raspberry Pi. And that's where I started a mission of building something which I can replace uh, a vendor product. And also I, I wanted to prove my point that it could run on a Raspberry Pi. And that's where I, I looked around what I can use, which is, which is open source, which has a large community behind, simple to use, and that's where Nginx and, and Apache, particularly Nginx, was uh, uh, very 
the the simplified ar architecture the multi worker multi uh, process architecture with the event driven and non blocking io caught my attention where you don't have to worry about uh, mutex and blocking threads and others and still allow us to develop now with nginx i found a lua plugin where you can build rapidly um, your business logic without compromising performance and particularly when we use lua jit it gives us similar performance to like c c++ i started my first poc proved that i could run on a raspberry pi supporting 600 plus tps and that's where we started this first proxy deployed when we started our journey from data center to cloud now when company rolled out our api strategy we also started looking for a right api gateway and we evaluated multiple products vendor products and also compared the prototype i had built and the prototype i had built outperformed not only in terms of performance and throughput but the flexibility customization and the cloud native that's where we decided to convert this prototype into a, a api gateway which we use today serving roughly 10 billion requests per day picking almost 300000 tps for our uh, all our traffic internal external and partner traffic now as as we build the api gateway we started with the uh, 100 million 10 million tp uh, the the request per day increased to 100 million and now we are serving uh, 10 billion plus a day we realized the the benefit we got out of building the api gateway and we built lot of common modules which can be reused to build other platforms and that's where i started another prototype to build our virtual card platform and then tokenization platform and now we have the entitlement and many other platform reusing the common modules and common framework with nginx and lua ecosystem yeah that's amazing yeah uh, uh, vikash what do you have to add to that yeah kevin so i came from a, a different background right where i was building uh apis for finance industry using high level languages and then i joined gateway team where i saw what team was doing and one thing like i really liked is that if you are writing a uh, reactive code in other languages how like very easily your business logic kind of gets lost in between those reactive constructs whereas in in lua we have like so many carefully written non blocking libraries that your code looks same but it's all non blocking code uh which really helps with like uh, performance um, so it was very interesting uh, when i looked at the nginx and then i i saw like what it was doing and then i i kind of now i look at the alternatives in other languages like what they are doing you know which can probably match the performance yeah yeah also, no that's Kevin, awesome uh, mm -hmm. this allowed us to replace uh, three vendor products which company was using with our in house built api gateway we supported soap traffic supported api traffic grpc web socket all of these uh, through a single api gateway which is uh, powered by nginx yeah that's amazing it's really cool that you guys are able to kind of set this standard for you know one particular uh system and then kind of replicate that and kind of distribute it amongst all of your applications and teams um i think that's really great it's one of the cool things about nginx is it can be you know this kind of like building block right to help grow uh grow the architecture and grow the um request per second and uh the the capabilities of your of your applications and APIs so that's really really good um i'm i'm curious are are you guys using nginx for anything else that we haven't covered um is there anything that nginx has kind of been uh you know a really kind of nice thing to have in certain scenarios or um really just anything else yeah so uh our journey started with na native deployment of nginx on on ec2 instances and now what we are doing we have built a whole ecosystem around it so you can take nginx lua application package it as a container and using our standard build pipelines to deploy them on aws ecs fargate uh, we have also built a static content hosting platform using nginx uh which is very popular in the company it's it's an enterprise capability now and default option if you want to build a single page app and host it yeah that's really great it's um, you know and 
Oh, yeah, there's more. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to point out is that it seems like our industry is transitioning from x86 to ARM architecture. So we are also adding support for that in our standard pipeline. So if teams, they want to adopt, uh, for example, AWS Graviton, they shouldn't be blocked. Uh, they should be able to take Nginx based application and deploy them on Graviton easily. Wow, that's really cool. You guys are doing a lot of cutting cutting edge stuff with Nginx and it seems like it's really able to help solve some problems for you guys. And I was just going to say, you know, Nginx is commonly referred to as the Swiss Army knife of the web. And uh, I think you guys are using all the different areas of the Swiss Army knife. So that's, that's really good. Um, where are you guys going next with your API infrastructure? You know, what what kind of plans do you guys have for the future? Um, you know, given industry trends and kind of where everything's going, you know, with uh, multi-cloud and, you know, what, what are your guys' strategies and your plans for APIs? So, Kevin, um, if, if we look at um, particularly last one or two years, we doubled our API traffic. We also rolled out a st um, strategic initiative to ensure all of our APIs are properly authenticated, authorized, and, and um, have the right level of controls, which means between two even internal um, applications, when they communicate through APIs, they go through the API gateway, and that has doubled our traffic. Now to contain the blast radius, what we are doing is we are separating out the control plane and, and we call it is a, a dedicated gateway or gateway light. In industry, we also use a sidecar, but we are not running local uh, to the, the application, but is a separate infrastructure supporting specific platforms or specific needs. And that has allowed us to reduce the blast radius and also um, enable the scaling and performance and latency needs for our customers. The other area where we are focusing is on the data loss uh, prevention and the drift. What we have designed API at um, and API specific, are they compliant at runtime? So give you an example, does my API uh, specification drift at runtime versus design time? And how do we proactively identify so both of these initiatives are rolled out uh, recently. And, and Kevin, if we talk about how we are developing APIs, uh, now we are taking a serverless first approach. So if you are going to build an API, you should, you should adopt uh, technologies such as AWS Lambda. Now, if it doesn't fit your use case, then container is our next option. So see if you can containerize it and then deploy. So, so that's our strategy, like going forward for building APIs. Yeah, that's great. It sounds to me like, you know, security is kind of up, up in mind, but at the same time, trying to optimize your services and optimize your architecture uh, in combination with giving your developers a lot of flexibility, right, on how they can deploy their applications uh, and their APIs. So, well, that's, that's really great. Um, is there anything else that you guys want to add or any kind of uh, advice you can give some of the viewers today uh, as they begin their journey on API uh, optimization and deploying their APIs at scale? I would uh, say that a microservice is a key when you build your APIs and also standardize um, use open API specification, have the right naming convention. So it becomes easier when you have large number of APIs, you know what uh, the discovery becomes easier or the consumption become easier um, uh, because you use the standardization as part of your API building. Yeah, and I, I would like to, I would like to add that like starting with API strategy is probably not the best strategy. First, customers should look at like what problems they are trying to solve. Then, then they should see like which API strategy is best for them, um, because there there are so many options. Uh, but irrespective of what they choose, uh, some of the things we discuss, like having a, a discovery portal or API gateway, that that's critical to having successful infrastructure. Well, that's great. You know, you guys really did provide a lot of valuable input today, and you know. 
Thank you so much, both of you guys, for being here today. And uh, thank you, everyone, on the call for attending this fireside chat during Nginx Sprint. Um, I really want to thank the panelists for sharing your guys' uh, you know, information and kind of being part of the Nginx community. Uh, your insights and your experience are really valuable. So thank you, guys. And uh, catch, the, catch the next part, part of Sprint coming up uh, along the rest of the day today. Thank, thank you. you.